in humans episode 3 thought to this episode is called divide and conquer spoilers for everything mcu leading up to and including this episode the show is rated tv pg so will this video be and comic books were a mistake i'm joking it's the meme yes uh let's dive right in so yeah the yeah um a young black bolt says that you know he he thinks you know wow it, it sure sounds like a show about inhumans i mean being king of inhumans would be boring and yeah there's definitely a loki thor you know from yeah as as kids from the opening of thor one you know yeah the the opening of thor one thing going on here i think this should probably have come sooner and let's see yeah um i did not hate the the joke with the the scientist you know so so the guy is like so you're you know building a moon hotel for that you know billionaire and she's like it's a moon base the hotel comes later that was slightly amusing, a nice bit of, you know, self-awareness, because that is definitely something, a significant chunk of the audience is like, really, this, this is the, yeah. And, let's see, yeah, and the, the cops put, or the, the, yeah, the prison guards put Black Bolt with, in Gen Pop, in order to, yeah, get get him to talk, which I feel like if they've actually experienced that, they would regret it. The scene with the ATM is just... You know, I, I love a lot of the MCU jokes. This just didn't really work. And... Let's see... Although I do appreciate that at least Medusa, unlike Black Bolt, apparently understands the concept of money. I guess from before she was royalty, maybe? That makes sense. And and yeah, we learned that the you know, the reason those guys who helped who have been helping um Gorgon you know, recently, the reason that they're so you know, they're so ready for a fight is their their vets. And you know, one of them has the line once a soldier, always a soldier, and that is something that is true of many, you know, military people. And let's see, that brings us to um, right. I quite appreciate the the um, that little bit of. Hawaiian history, which I believe is accurate. This thing of, you know, we used to have a king and then the mainland came and decided we were part of them. And let's see. Yeah. Um, I'm not 100% sure why they're making a big deal. Like, so the post credit scene, which apparently... Like when you go to I'm I'm to be the the frequently asked questions um yeah, just asks how was Auron still alive when in the previous episode she was stabbed and killed by Medusa? No one has answered this question yet. So apparently a lot of people missed the post credit scene of the episode before this one. But yeah, they're you know, she specifically asks, you know, send backup and now they're like, We're sending backup and anyway, and and then, you know, it says, you know, sending backup and Mortis. And it's kind of funny how, like, here early on, they're, like, building this guy up. And then once he... Yeah, once he actually arrives, he's... Like, he, he has a, a moment or two that are, that are impressive. But some of it just... Yeah. I'll... I'll um... Yeah, actually, yeah, when they, you know, the, the, so, so Maximus asks, you know, if I open this door, is it dangerous? And, you know, he, he touches him, and, you know, he says, I, I can't see anything. No, I, I, I know, I just want to hold hands. There's nothing wrong with that. Anyway, um, yeah, the, the, 
I'm not making an anti-gay joke. I just think it's it's funny if he thought there would be a vision. You know, one of them thought there'd be a vision, the other one is just like, I just thought it'd be, be nice. It doesn't even have to be sexual or romantic. Anyway, holding hands, I mean. Anyway, but yeah, um, you know, the the door opens, he comes out, pretty decent, like, de design and, and such, and, and yeah, some of his early lines are very ominous, but then once they get to the forest, he's all like, are we there yet? And it's like, I mean, he wanted for them to get to, to the, the area they were headed to sooner. And he ends up asking, um, what was her name? The, the, you know, one of the Inhumans there can affect the, the forest. And so he, uh, Flora, Flora is her name. He asks her, can't you make a path? Which also, like, why didn't nobody else think of that? Like, just, wow. Anyway, but yeah, the way I would have handled the scene is just to have him say, Either Flora makes a path, or I will, and maybe, like, reach to, to, you know, and the other's like, no, 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 okay, okay, Flora, do it, do it, quick, you know, something like that, but, but he just comes across, he's, he's, he's less, like, godly, powerful being that everyone is afraid, like, people barely whisper his name, and they're like, holy crap, you know, he's kind of more, like, pebble in your shoe. He's just kind of annoying right now. And Yeah. Uh, Medusa gets into a rich person's home and steals various things. Uh, let's see. And it's, I, I don't necessarily mind. It just feels like because, like, by the end of this episode, she's finally ready to go and, and help Black Bolt. That took three episodes, or I guess, well, let's see, she arrived on Earth at the end of episode one. This is, yeah, two entire episodes before we got to there. This could have been much, much sooner. And yes, I know, I get it, you know, technically in the show, it's like, she had to be on the bus, and then she had to figure out how things work and on Earth in, in the modern day, you know. But they, they didn't have to do that. They could have had, you know. And several other characters are also just, like, they're doing that thing where they split up a bunch of characters because those characters put together would end the story in almost no time, you know. And, yeah, it's just, like, originally... This was supposed to be a movie. This was not supposed to be a, you know, an, an entire show. And I feel like this... Let's see. Um, let's see. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Kevin Feige probably canceled the movie because it d didn't really fit into the wider MCU that well. Would have kept the MCU films tied close to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Kim Feige did not want this. He wanted to be divorced from the TV shows as much as possible. So it was made into a show. And, yeah, I, I can imagine that, like, in, this entire thing of them ending up in separate places, which also, like, Lockjaw got pretty distinct orders. Oh, I guess it's like, yeah, okay, yeah, dog, sometimes you'll be like, okay, Boy, now do this, and and it'll do the exact wrong thing, and then but smile and pant and look like D did I do right, person? Which adorable. That's part of why we love them. That's probably how we got there. But the the like behind the scenes reason I can imagine is that they needed to stretch this out because you know if you don't make a feature length movie, you know the like direct to video movie or direct to TV movie. I I can imagine still has a bit of stink on it. Like, people still don't think that's a particularly good thing. Although, some of the direct-to-streaming movies have been great. But, you know, the ones I've watched that went directly to Hulu have been have been great. But the... Yeah. I, I don't really think so far... You know, this is a third of the way in... Three episodes into an eight-episode season, I don't think this has justified so far 
being this this long, you know, and this is the first of the MCU shows that I feel that way about, you know. I think Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Agent Carter both used all the, the runtime they had extremely well, you know, so did Legion and The Gifted, which, you know, those are... X-Men, not MCU, but, you know, Marvel TV live-action shows recently. Yeah, um, I, I figured this whole thing of them ending up in different places on Earth, or t t different parts of Hawaii, you know, that was because they needed to, to stretch it out, and I can imagine, like, the f maybe the first half of the first episode and and the last and and the finale episode those are probably going to be those are probably what the movie was originally going to be now let's see i will admit i i chuckled when you know the it's, it's not funny it's for for Karnak himself obviously he's he's upset about losing his powers but just the way that they staged it was kind of funny you know he thought oh you know if I kick over that table the entire structure is going to come down I can free myself and then he kicks it over and it just knocks over a table and one of the others is like what did you do that for <laughs> you could have broken that table's leg are you what is wrong with you you know just which just that's very funny coming from a kidnapper, you know, just the, the, yeah, I, I will admit that, that, that got me. Let's see, and I appreciate, and one of the others is like, well, maybe he's a little upset that you just said we should kill him, you know, just, yeah. But I, I did appreciate the, the conversation later between Karnak and the, the woman working with the, yeah, the, the kidnapper and the, Weed growers, you know. Let's see. Yeah, um, I I appreciated that the um, you know the episode makes it seem as though the the inhuman in prison is you know a bad guy, and that the the doctor you know <coughs> the the other guy from Lost, um, Henry Ian Cusick, the terribly unconvincing Russian from the first Hitman movie, and more notably Lost. But yeah, the, the, um, yeah, you know, it seemed like, oh, you know, ill intent, and then, you know, when you, th by the end, you realize that wasn't the case, and when you think back, yeah, technically, they didn't say, you know, it's not like the doctor said, you know, He's not gonna like what what I have planned. No, he said, you know, I want him. Will you help me? You know, I know why you're really in prison. And and yeah, by the end we learn he he didn't intentionally do anything wrong. He lost control of his superpowers. You know, his inhuman powers. But but yeah, you know, at first it seems like right after Black Bolt gets in his cell, it sounds like oh, you know, he's gonna do something horrible. But then you know he starts talking about like the terrigenesis and and such, and yeah, you know the the yeah that was a that was a pretty good misdirect, and I I will say. The thing with the the doctor and the the convict, I am a little curious as to what is going to happen next there. And also, you know that that finally, Medusa has a ride. You know, for a while I was like, you still don't have a ride. And yeah, the the you know, but but yeah. The, the scientist going to hook her up. And yeah, so we get to the forest fight. Um, I think it's kind of funny that earlier in the episode, you know, he was like, what, are they bulletproof? And then we get to it, and it's like, I mean, they're not bulletproof, but there's definitely some plot armor involved. Like, Auron should definitely have been hit by at least one bullet there. And we know she heals, so I don't know why they didn't have that happen. I guess the fight itself between her and Gorgon would have been less credible if she was wounded. That was, that was a decent enough fight. And... 
yeah, people keep getting too close to, to Gorgon, allowing him to attack them. You know, people who should know that, you know, his attack, yeah. It was pretty cool seeing Mortis use his, his power, very reminiscent of, like, Cyclops from the X-Men, as opposed to Greek myth. And the, let's see... Yeah, you know, the, the, yeah, Max, that was pretty, maybe I'll just call him Max from now on, because that was legitimately funny, you know, the, the, like, I guess, leader of Genetic Council, like, so, Max, what's up, you know, oh, my king, you know, that, that was, that was kind of funny, which also, like, yeah, I 100% believe that people who know them would start shortening their names, because Maximus just sounds just that's a that's a lot to say every single time but yeah you know max does not like it very much he you know he's got the inferiority complex going on and and yeah you know he max is like we're going to remove the the caste system and and you know the genetic council leader is like that would tear our society apart which like i mean you haven't really proven that yet. That kind of just sounds like something that they wrote in there because they were worried that the audience was starting to sympathize more with Max. Because, like, no, cast is... Like, there's lots of countries around the world that operate very smoothly without a caste system. Like, I'll grant that there might be, like, a transition period or something, but, like it's it's doable it's it's possible to to you know see. i mean they're talking about caste system they're not even talking about like having a um let's see i'm still new to to these this terminology i believe it's called a a vertical power hierarchy you know they're they're not talking about instating communism they're just talking about removing the the caste system just yeah and yeah um i mean props for trying you, you know can't can't fault her for trying crystal is like where's lockjaw you know i, I everybody knows that, you know everywhere i go he's right there next to me and and max has to say you don't actually think i would be naive enough to give you your teleporting hound, and it is like, I mean, come on, Crystal, I did, like, I think she is supposed to be like a teenage girl, but even so, like, that's, that's like something a seven-year-old would try, that's not, holy crap, um, but yeah, then we have the, the, the burn, she, I am hiring her for the next, next roast, because, like, you know, Maximus is king of no one. <laughs> oh, snap. Yeah, that is, fair enough, that is something a teenager would think was, like, the, the sickest burn. So, yeah, we're, we're back to, to an accurate representation. of That's, honestly, that's something that I would have said as a teenager. So, 100%, yeah. And, and yeah, she uses her powers... You know, and they're like, it's frozen. Don't let her go. And, yeah, I, I appreciate the expectation subversion of, you know, the, the prison guards think, oh, there's going to be a big fight. You know, we can definitely get, you know, Black Bolt beaten up. And, you know, the, the yeah, so he he walks close to, to some of the other, you know, walks over to some of the, the prisoners, you know, and one of them's like, so... This is the guy, the guy who beat up a lot of cops and rode a skateboard in a zone that wasn't allowed and spray painted something really cool. Like, why did the guards think this would work? Like, this is kind of not, like, if there's one thing you can be pretty confident that a convict that's, like, hardened and willing to beat up someone he doesn't even know is going to be in favor of, it's probably attacking cops like that, you know, and they do the, the fist bump and just, yeah. 
and and yeah, the the prison guard is like determined. So he's like, you know, he he throws down the 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 weights and is like, you know, you pick those up. And and one of the cons throws like a basketball in the back of his head, which like you know, and there is a fight, just like they asked for, you know. It just it didn't it didn't play out exactly how they they hoped and yeah the the uh, let's see both Black Bolt and the the comic end up on the the helicopter and yeah flying off and and I mean I feel like it's at least slightly contrived but I guess. The, the scientist, yeah, the scientist was, like, parked outside. She was just waiting. And, yeah, the fact that Medusa arrives, like, literally two seconds too late to get on the helicopter, when literally, like, the fact that she arrived any time around, any, yeah, around the time of the helicopter at all, when she had no idea that that would be, that was kind of contrived. <clears throat> But yeah, I I am honest for the first time in in these first three episodes. I am legitimately, I I look forward to finding out. I'm I'm legitimately interested in at least some of what comes next. I I want to know what the deal is with Doctor Declan. And let's see, yeah. So I'm to be trivia. The title of this episode is a reference to the title of the Human Story in the comic book issue. Fantastic Four Annual, Volume 1, Number 5. And someone else pointed out, Ken Lung and Henry Ian Cusick previously worked together in Lost. Yeah, this was a bit of a reunion. So, yeah, I should be able to do an episode tomorrow. And who knows, maybe this thing will actually be able to, to turn things around for the last two-thirds of the season.